So let's talk a little bit about the lures that I like to use when I go out bobcat trapping. I've already said in the video that I, I, the best baits that you can use is a beaver-based bait. Now, mice-based baits will work, but for bobcats and even canines, if you want to optimize your opportunity to, to catch these uh, predators, I believe beaver-based baits are much better. So anything that's beaver-based meat, uh, predator baits, you're going to be good. You're going to be good. Or you can just use beaver meat. Catch beavers and just use beaver meat. Um, so with that being said, I want to talk a little bit about the lures. You know, I'm not going to show you 20, 30, 40 different lures that I have. I have canister after canister just full of lures. I'm going to show you what I believe to be the best lures that I use. If I'm going to go out and I'm putting all my chips on in on trying to catch some bobcats quick and easy, this is what, these are the lures that I'm going to want to have in my pack. You know, if I'm talking to a master musky fisherman and I'm going to ask him a little bit about, you know, catching musky, I'm not going to ask him for every lure he's got in his tackle box. I'm going to say, if you're going to this river this time of year, what is going to, and you only have one lure that you can take, what, you know, what lure would you take to catch musky? So I'm just going to kind of narrow this down and just show you the main lures that I use. First and foremost, I believe that the best curiosity lure that general lure that you can use for bobcats canines even water critters it'll call in anything with a nose is a beaver um uh gland lure uh, a beaver you know gland lure used as a call lure i mean that is it's going to work on anything uh and everything and it really works great on bobcats with that being said a lot of different companies make you know a uh, uh, beaver uh, gland lure so I'm going to show you the one that I think is the best product, and that is Cavens. Tim Cavens Minnesota Trapping Products uh, makes an incredible uh, beaver gland lure called Timber. Worth every cent. I mean, if you can get your hands on some of this stuff, you're doing great. Best gland lure on the market, in my opinion. Uh, had incredible results, you know, trapping bobcats and trapping beaver with it. It's just, it's just amazing product. So if you really want to have the best gland lure out there, uh, best call lure, I believe it should be a beaver gland. It would be timber uh, by uh, Cavings uh, Trapping Products. Next, I'm going to talk about, of course, you're going to be trapping bobcats during their, uh, you know, it's a time of year when they're going to be uh, breeding. So you want to think about gland lures. Uh, again, I have all kinds of different gland lures, but the one that I think stands apart above any and all the rest is um, it's made by Fur Country Lures, and it's called Tomcat. I believe it's a John Graham's product. But um, don't hold me to that, but uh, it's Fur Country Lures and it's called Tomcat. Amazing, amazing, amazing gland lure, uh, bobcat gland lure. I mean, again, stands apart from all the rest. It's thick, it holds well at the sights, and it just, it's just very, very, very effective. I mean, noticeable difference when I started going to this high quality um, gland lure, uh, bobcat gland lure, a noticeable difference. I used to use some of the other name brands. I'm on the, they're real watery and just, that's not the case with this. This is a high quality product. Definitely, if you want to get the best, it would be Tomcat by uh, Fur Country Lures, in my opinion. Again, I am not sponsored by anyone. I am way too small to be sponsored by anyone. I pay for these products myself. This is just my personal opinion based on years and years of experience. But um, another product that I really like, I've recently come to like uh, in the last few years, is a product that Clint Locklear makes, uh, Predator Control Group. Um, and it's a cat collector for cats. It's, it, he calls it a rub lure. And I have run this lure specifically to try to, in front of cameras, to try to get some rubbing action. And I have actually done that. But I like it. Um, it's not a real stinky lure or anything like that. But it's kind of got that minty smell to it. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's a really good product. Holds up really well. It's really chunky. You can smear it in there good in the cracks on, on, on different stuff at your set. And it just holds up real w well against the weather. And it's definitely a good curiosity lure for bobcats. It's just, it's just something I really enjoy. Um, and I always take, like, like I'm showing you, I always take these bigger size when I'm out actually making my line. Um, another, just, just to show it to you, and I didn't have any new ones. I had to pull out one of the old ones I've been in the process of using. It's an O'Gorman lure, um, and it's Powder River Cat Call. I've had some success with this. I, very, very good lure. I, I really enjoy using it. Um, in fact, like I said, I'm down to one jar. I'm going to have to order some more. But uh, Powder River Cat Call is really good, and I was actually finding this at some of your more your higher end, you know, uh, sporting goods stores. I believe, I believe I actually bought this from uh, Sportsman's Warehouse. So, um, but anyway, uh, very very good good lure to, to consider whenever you're 
out trapping bobcats. So, you know, I carry those big jars whenever I'm out. That's my pack when I'm initially setting my lines. But when I'm out checking, you want something smaller. I like to be very inconspicuous when I'm out checking my lines. And sometimes I'm just shoving a couple things down in my pockets. Um, so with that being said, you know, you can get, um, like this is Spotted Fury Bobcat Glam, or you can get this in a smaller size. I'm not sure if you can get Tomcat in a smaller size or not. I, I usually use some alternate just to kind of switch up the scent a little bit after I, I make. Of course, you can get the Tim Cavins Timber in a smaller size, and you can get the Predator Control Groups um, Bobcat uh, Rub Lure uh, in a smaller size as well. Um, and that's just something I do whenever I'm, I'm out um, checking, you know, when I just throw a couple things in my pocket. Always, when I'm checking, I have two lures in my pocket, two things in my pocket. One is a lure that I really like to use when I know a weather front's coming in, and I've got to hold a sight, got to keep some smell on it when I'm dealing with some rough weather. This is called Hallbaker Sure Catch Fox and Coyote Lure. I like to put it on bleach bones. It's a white pasty lure. It blends in on the bone real good. Holds up. I mean, it's incredible how well this holds up. It's real oily when it gets hot. It just sinks into the bone or the wood or whatever you're putting it on. Um, but in cold weather, it just hardens up, uh, gets like a wax, turns into like a wax. That's what it reminds you of. And it just holds up really well to bad weather. Um, it says sure catch fox and coyote lure, but bobcats love it. It smells like, to me, just my opinion, it smells like slightly rotten, wet Dorito potato chips. Um, but it's something about that, it's like almost like a aged cheese smell to it. And they absolutely, absolutely love it. So that's something that's always in my pocket. Um, even when I'm running my trail cameras for scouting, it's one of the main things I use on my bleach bones and stuff. And, of course, catnip oil. Again, it's an oil. It's going to hold up real well to weather. Wild canine like catnip, just like domestic canine like catnip. Uh, I, I will even use this when I'm making my initial sets because, again, you're not going to overwhelm a bobcat's nose. Um, but catnip oil, and this is one of uh, the Minnesota brand, one of Tim Cavins' products. It just absolutely, I mean, absolutely incredible uh, uh, um, oil-based lure that you can use is going to hold up real well to weather. So that's why these two are always in my pocket because I know what's coming up with weather, front, weather fronts and I know when I have one coming up, you know, I'm going to be putting these down to get that set through the weather um, with, with the baits and the lures that I, stuff have, uh, that I have down. Um, lastly, I'm going to talk a little bit about, and there's, you probably see there's kind of a theme to this. I'm, I look at baits and lures that hold up really well um, and anything oily you know, is going to hold up pretty um, so another thing you can consider is fish oil. Fish oil works really well, you know, bobcats, <laughs> fish, and, fish and, and cats, you know, they like to eat, uh, bobcats like to eat fish for sure. Um, so fish oil can be very productive, but you can also get a lot of non-target catches. You know, fish, nothing will draw in coons and possums or anything more than fish oil, so that's something to think about. Um, also, just to finish up, um, urines. I use either bobcat urine or red fox urine at all of my sets. So when you're out getting your urines, if you have the, if you have, like for me, I'd actually drive to, uh, I have multiple providers that are in driving distance of me, um, uh, trapper supply places that I go to. I pick the lightest colored urine I can find. I, I want a urine, if I could find it to look like that, that that's what I want. Um, dark urine works just, I mean, it works. I mean, it works good for canines, uh, but I, I think bobcats just like stuff that's fresh, fresh bait. Fresh lures, fresh urine, they just, that seems to be their way. They're a very clean animal. They just, you know, not to say they won't roll around in something they ain't supposed to roll around in, but they're not like, they're not like canines in that, in that way. Um, so I look for the light colored stuff. And I know there's a lot of people might not agree with that, but that's, if I had to choose between a dark urine and a light urine, I'm definitely going to go with the light urine. Everything's going to turn into ammonia eventually, but I want it to take as long as I can get. I can get, I want it to last as long as I can before it gets to that state. Um, and, and that would be the case with a lighter colored urine. So um, that's everything I have in reference to uh, what I like to carry when I'm out making my initial sets and then some of the stuff I carry whenever I'm out checking my sets to rebate, relure, and, and, and such. Um, so uh, if, you, if you want to invest in high quality products, those are the products to get uh, to maximize your chances on catching on the line. All right, so that's pretty much uh, everything I have in reference to uh, the, the best lures and, and, and baits and urines that you can get uh, to make your sets and check your sets. Um, you know, for me, it's worth that investment. You know, there are some one-stop shops now, some big, you know, uh, trapping supply companies uh, that, that have vast inventories where you can go and you can find, you know, you don't have to go to every individual, you know, producer. You can go and you can find somebody that carries uh, these products um, and, you know, and, and get them. For me, 
I don't know what's more valuable than my time. Uh, and bobcat trapping can be, uh, you know, a lot of physical labor involved there. And if I'm going to be out there putting forth the physical effort and spending my valuable time out there trying to, you know, catch some bobcats, I want to optimize my opportunity to do that so it's worth the investment on these high-quality products. So it's just something for you to consider. This is one of my favorite sets for cats and for fox. Uh, I've had a lot of luck with it for uh, for, for gray fox, but uh, it's feather regrass posted up, uh, feathered up a, a, a little bit with some turkey feathers, uh, cow bone over to the side for extra eye peel. I've got my feather hanging in the apple tree. We're down here below an apple tree uh, that's just isolated out in the middle of a field. Uh, predators, you know, they see it one tree out in the middle of a the field. They're kind of drawn to that uh, to go over and kind of check it out uh, or to mark their territory. Uh, I've got bait, predator bait down in a hole and predator bait smeared up underneath the uh, feather regrass. I've got my trap bedded out to the front. One little stepping stick here. Uh, don't have to step down too much. Uh, uh, you got to kind of watch it uh, when you're kind of trying to cut. Uh, I'm trying to catch either bobcat or fox here. And you got to kind of watch your stepping guys with fox and such. Um, but uh, I, I like this little piece of stick. This is natural and it's in the ground good. So it'll cause something to have to work around quite a bit to get a good, good look down in that hole. So um, I'm real excited about this set, and, and we'll see what happens here. Come back into the area that I uh, have the caster mound right where the beaver dam meets the edge of this deep shale bank down below the road. 
As you can see, I got a double down here. That's beaver number six and beaver number seven from this area. And uh, they look like they're all twisted and tangled in on each other. They're also both acting as if they're caught by the back foot. Had a caster mound right there. Actually, there's still some of it there piled up. And I had two traps bedded there, and I've got a double, which is what I was hoping for. That's beaver number six and beaver number seven from this area this year. I just don't know how many more could be in here, but I'm going to get them uh, taken care of and get these sets remade and see if there's any more left in here. I'm here at a beaver hut. I just checked some sets upstream and I had uh, a double on beaver upstream from here. Yesterday I caught three, including a huge female. I uh, came down here to the main body of water they've got backed up with a beaver dam and there's a big beaver hut here that's got, on the other side of this hut from where I'm standing, there's, there's, there's some deep water there, but there's two holes going into the beaver hut and they're gigantic they're really wide holes I, I couldn't get them covered with a 330 connie bear so i came over on this side of the beaver hut and it was a hole that uh, was just big enough for me to get a connie bear into and so i, I put one in here the day before yesterday we're on a 72 hour check for connie bears underwater and i came in here today after two nights and that's the result got them uh, it's a really good sized beaver that's a big beaver right there and i caught them right behind the uh, right there on the neck, uh, across the throat. So uh, I'm glad to have them. I had a trap set here on this feed bed. Uh, there's a lot of chewed sticks and stuff downstream, kind of jammed up just downstream here. So I knew that this point right here was a feed bed where beaver like to sit and chew on their sticks. Put a little bit of Hallbaker's beaver lure on one of those upright sticks there next to that chewed, that chewed stick that's laying on the edge of the water there. And uh, down here, can't hardly really see it, but down here at the end of the slide wire, uh, got us a uh, about a medium sized beaver here. So, uh, this is actually, uh, I've checked uh, six traps, and this is the third beaver uh, after checking six traps. So, I'm running a 50% success rate so far. Got a couple uh, Connie bears set down the creek a little further. One next to a beaver hut and the other one in a run down next to the dam. So I'm going to go down there and get them checked. Well, I'm down here below the beaver hut and walking up on this, uh, there's a trench that actually goes alongside the beaver dam. The beaver dam's just down below here. It's backed up all down through there next to the railroad berm. But the beaver dam comes on and around all the way down through this way. It's a little short dam, ain't very big, but it's holding back a lot of water. But uh, uh, gouged out a place in the beaver dam right there where you see the, wa the running water. And the way it looks in behind me, uh, it's not the only way that you can reach this part where it's gouged out, but the trench leads right over from the from the main body of water here and the trench comes down through and it just parallels alongside the dam with the beaver being cupping, coming up and alongside the dam to uh, to build it and to repair it and so right down here where this trench it runs parallel to the dam meets the main body of water here kind of build up some chewed sticks place the 330 Connie bear in there and I don't know how well it's showing up on camera with the reflection in the sky there, but 
ripples in the water, but I got a beaver down in there in that 330. See if I can move some of this stuff. That's the ducking. I hate to call it a ducking stick. It's more like a ducking log. But uh, kind of got guide sticks down in here. Get them pulled out. Show you this beaver. I got guide sticks set in and alongside on both sides, kind of making a triangle across the top of the 330 Connie Bear. And uh, the 330 was sitting on a stakeizer down in the bottom. You want to set your you want to set your 330s down along the bottom of these trenches because when a beaver dives, it's going to dive straight down to the bottom, push off the bottom with his front paws, and then start swimming along the bottom until he gets under whatever obstruction he's trying to... You know, a beaver don't want to hit their noggin when they're going up underneath something, so they're always going to go down to the bottom to try to get past whatever obstruction they're trying to get past. And got a beaver right there. He was, he was at some little bit of a speed going right there. He got all the way up in it. Um, and I see here he also, he also broke off one side of my trigger. I'm going to get a new trigger put on there. Um, but, uh, this is the seventh beaver out of here. So, uh, I very rarely ever see more than be seven beavers in an area this size, but, uh, I'm going to remake these and run them for at least another night. I like to have a night or two and not catching anything just to make sure. But I've got the beaver eradicated out of the area. So this is number seven, and hopefully it's the last one. But uh, I'm going to get this one out of this Connie Bear, get this reset, and get on up the marsh here. I'm here at one of my favorite locations. I'm going to try to speak loud because I'm down here next to the creek. But I'm at a three-chambered culvert. And the chamber that's closest to where I'm standing, it stays dry unless we get a really bad flood. Uh, it stays dry. And the coons and the bobcats and such, they like to hunt uh, up through this, uh, this culvert. Uh, you know, bobcats don't like to be exposed when they're out crossing a roadway. And this is a good place that they can actually cross the road without being exposed. Um, I... Last time I was in here, I actually caught a double. I had a, a, a bobcat, a male bobcat right there, full grown. Uh, right, right there I had a set. Um, and I put a walkthrough down here between the concrete part of the culvert and I brushed it in on the other side and put a walkthrough right here and put a, a trap on a drag and I had a bobcat right there. I was so excited when I came over and looked and saw this bobcat over here that I totally forgot about my walkthrough set and uh, when I was walking down to go over and get a better look I got between this culvert uh, wall and that cat over there on a, on a drag and before it hissed at me and I realized it was there about to scare the britches off of me but um, so last time I was in here I got a double it's a really good place I lost count I, I lost count a long time ago as to how many bobcats I've caught in this area either on this side of the culvert or on the other side of the culvert um, I'm getting ready to go put in, put in another set on the other side, uh, not immediately adjacent to the culvert, but one of the feeder ridges that come down to the creek here, uh, not so far off from the other side of it. So uh, that's what's going on here. Well, I just finished making a set here on this gas line. It's a uh... A bank hole set. Um, they've recently cut this ga gas line open and I, I think the cats and the coyotes and such are uh, foxes are just running right up here in the middle of it. Uh, got a bank hole set here flashed up with feathers and a bleach bone. Uh, got some beaver meat and beaver caster in the back, some bobcat gland lure in the front, um, and some uh, a bobcat urine there on the, uh, on the log over here on this side in the tuff of grass. Got a feather hanging up right there show you what it looks like down the other side of the gas line I usually like to have my traps closer to where I think the bobcats are actually going because I've got a lot of video bites where bobcats will walk right past 
even flashy sets within a few feet. I mean, you almost got to have it, you know, right in their in their path or as close to their path as you can get it. Um, but I can't really bring this set out into the middle of the gas line because uh, if I catch something, it'll be seen from the road. You can, well, I'll show you here. You can see there's the car. The gas line just kind of parallels the road, so didn't have any choice but to keep it over there to keep the catch out of sight. Uh, that bank right there will keep it out of sight, and so uh, we'll see what happens. And you can see, even from the other side of the gas line, how well, you know, that set kind of stands out. I've been having a lot of luck lately. i uh, been finding a lot of coyotes in these bank hole sets. Um, they'll actually get in there and work them good, uh, as long as you don't put down a lot of stepping sticks or guide sticks, which, which I don't have on this set. I'm not targeting coyotes here. This is public ground. I'm mainly looking for fox and um, bobcats, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a coyote in this set. Hey, you know you're in good bobcat trapping territory. I jumped three of these in one day, just making a few sets the other day. I was only in a few locations, and I jumped three. Whenever I'm turkey hunting, you can hear them come out. Isn't that thing pretty? Mm-hmm. It's good eating, too. Well, these are the kind of areas you want to find where you got fields and thick brush. Uh, briars and autumn olive and uh, real thick you know brush in along the edges of your fields I'm in a location here that's actually set up by the it's for service ground but the game department manages it for uh, for rabbit hunting there's a lot of rabbits and a lot of grouse in here but uh, this is one of my favorite locations I actually call this Bobcat Central I've caught well over a dozen Bobcats here over the last decade uh, it's a really good location uh, and this is only a small section of it it's it's about four times bigger than this the other way so uh, it's a lot of ground in here and and uh, I've got three sets down in here now there's actually a field across a drainage on the far side of the got a trap over there but there's a, a drainage over there and there's a field behind that and there's I, I mean this is maybe one third uh, there's two thirds of this kind of ground behind the camera behind me right now that's about a third of the overall area I guess but uh, just a, a beautiful place to trap So there's a saying amongst trappers, it's not an old saying, but it's pretty popular. We say that it takes a thousand dollar investment to catch a hundred dollars worth of fur. And oftentimes it seems like that's right these days. And the fur market's not doing so good, so anybody that's in it for the money is 
probably not making a wise decision. Uh, for me, it was always about trapping recreationally, uh, just for fun. And if I made a little bit of money to offset the overhead costs, then that was great. But, of course, I was never in it for the money. I want to talk a little bit about what you can do to optimize your investment in the products that you put down in your set locations. One real good tip, something I didn't think about till well into my trapping and even hunting career, um, that's really paid dividends for me. You know, we invest a lot of money in products like gland lures and uh, different type of bait attractants and bait itself, and also urines, uh, bobcat urine, red fox urine. Those are always my favorite. So, we'll give you a tip on what you can do to optimize the effectiveness of that investment of those, those particular products. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, trap placement or set placement for bobcat trapping. It's very important when trapping bobcats to try your best to put your sets as close to where those bobcats are walking as possible. The reason for that is bobcats, again, they hunt a lot with their vision and most of the time they look for movement. They have a good nose, but their nose is not as good as wild canines. So, you know, you're going to have to take some, uh, some steps to try your best to uh, try to get your lures and your bait and the odor of your, you know, the bobcat urine or whatever you're using, red fox urine, to get to the cat, uh, to get them to work your set. So what you want to think about when you're doing your sets is, one, can I get this set right on its tracks, right where the sign shows it's walking, it's hunting? A lot of times you can't because bobcats will hunt uh, a lot of the places I target, in addition to areas like this, growed over fields, are logging roads that connect clear cuts that are growed up, or gas lines or growed over power lines um, things like that so and, and even you know small clearings will have access trails to the clearings that go around the edges of them that either humans walk or humans drive so on a logging road the and gas lines and such where the service vehicles come in the bobcats will go they'll just run the tire tracks usually if it's elevated or canted or something like that they tend to like to be on the high side. They tend to like to be on the higher side of the track. And I believe that's just, again, so they can see a little bit better whenever they're hunting, look for motion uh, or prey species. So, um, but that's not always the case. You just have to look at what the sign's telling you. So what you want to do is you want to get as close as possible, but you can't sit right on it. Because if you sit right on it, you stand a chance of it being found by humans, getting run over by vehicles. Um, uh, you know, you, you, you don't want that to happen. Uh, to your, to your gear, plus there's trap, trap depth to think about. So what you want to do is think about the primary wind in your area. My primary wind comes out of the northwest where I live. So if I'm targeting a pinch point like this or a, a gas line or a power line that's growed over or, or a logging road connecting, um, you know, clear cuts or something of that nature, or even, you know, small clearings, uh, thick clearings, I'm going to sit on that northwest side of it because I know the wind's going to come from that direction and blow towards where I believe the cat's hunting. So I believe that's very important. You want to uh, you want to take advantage of your primary winds because the vast majority of the time you can pretty much know which direction the wind's coming from, you know, absent of a, of a, of a weather front that's changed things. So try to set, make your sets to where you take advantage of that wind direction. It can make the difference. I've got trail cam videos of cats just trotting right past my sets before I started to realize hey you know I don't have that set placed properly based on the wind um, and then I would start to move the sets to the opposite side of the logging road or start thinking about the wind direction and increase my, uh, my, my, my catch ratio quite a bit so just something to think about primary wind direction putting your sets as close as you can to where the bobcats are walking and uh, and trying to take advantage as much as you can of getting your scent post your lures your baits your urine and everything to uh to pay off for you by getting uh getting those odors in that bobcat's nose striking their curiosity getting them to come over and work your sets